Idiots, criminals, drug addicts. The restaurant business is filled with horrible people. So here are eight degenerates I used to work with back at IHOP. One co-worker was a pillhead named Christine. Christine was an overall great worker when she wasn't high. Unfortunately, <coughs> would pop pills like they were Tic Tacs. One time she came in so blasted that she sat in the child's high chair and got stuck. To make the problem worse, it's a busy Sunday morning and everyone in the restaurant is like, what is that crackhead doing? Another co-worker named Sharif would sometimes bring weapons to work. He'd be in the back showing off his illegal switchblade, making jokes that if the table didn't leave him a tip, he'd leave him his tip. Now the co-worker was a Spanish chick named Sophia, who I'm pretty sure was a prostitute. She'd always have guys come in and ask for her specifically, which was weird because she looked like a burn victim with an eating disorder. And Sophia would mysteriously keep getting expensive things. Like one day she came to work with a brand new white BMW. Like bitch, you're getting paid 30 grand a year. How the hell are you affording that? The hostess was a banging chick named Roxanne, who was equally as hot as she was stupid. You see, Roxanne had a thing for bad boys, or basically anyone that would make poor decisions. She'd very openly give her number out to anyone with tattoos, a motorcycle, or a substance abuse problem. Which was hilarious because Roxanne was married, and her husband would show up every once in a while for a surprise visit. And no matter how bad my day was, I can't tell you the joy I'd feel watching him walk up in the parking lot as Roxanne is clearly flirting with someone. My manager was a guy named Jamal, who spent most of his life in a correctional facility, and had what some people call an anger issue. Most of the time he was all smiles, but if you pushed his buttons, convict Jamal would come out. One time Jamal got so angry with a customer, he shattered a plate and threatened them with the broken in peace. It was wild. We're all looking at Jamal like, what are you doing? Well, everyone except Roxanne, who couldn't be more turned on. Fortunately, the customer was like, F this, and booked it out of there. Now Jamal's in the back with blood all over his hand, and I'm like, bro, you really gotta go to the hospital. And he's like, Ugh, nah, bro, I don't trust doctors. The owners of the IHOP were a father and son. The father was a rageful, petty person who would chew out workers on a regular basis, while the son was a personable, charming fella. However, both of them were pieces of shit because they would steal money from their employees. You see, what they did was change the time you clocked in and out. Most Servers didn't notice because you only get paid a few dollars an hour, but the cooks most certainly did notice as taking away nine bucks a day really adds up. Unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, everyone working there was a degenerate who had no other options but to accept some greedy American giving him that corporate D. The wife of the owner was a gold digger named Casey. Casey has the IQ of a Down syndrome kid who huffs paint. The fact that she could hold a conversation without biting her own tongue always amazed me. The owner would buy Casey expensive things that he'd bring up whenever he got angry, like the owner paid for Casey to get a boob job and one day just yelled at her in the middle of the restaurant saying, I paid for those tits, so roll some goddamn silverware! Casey drove a Mercedes, and the fact that someone gave her a license still baffles me to this day. Every day her car would have some new dent or scratch on it. Like, damn bitch, please don't drive near any middle schools. The combos, or busboys, were all illegal Mexicans who were the only good workers there. Well, all of them except one guy named Pedro, who let's say had sticky fingers. Whenever a customer would leave something at the table, Pedro would snatch that shit like it was the last piece of pizza. Like one dude left his wallet on a seat and I could see it from a distance, but I'm super busy, so I'm not making a beeline for it. When I finally got around to the table, surprise, surprise, the wallet was missing. And the customer comes back in asking me if I saw it. Now, what am I supposed to do here? Narc on one of my coworkers who could be deported for this and have pure vengeance in his eyes for the gringo that sent him back to the motherland? Or just say, I don't know. So, of course, I went with the latter, but the customer was adamant that I stole it. To recap, I'm getting paid poverty wages while getting yelled at by a guy as Pedro is in the back squinting at me cleaning knives. The only time Pedro came in clutch was one time I had a table of young guys that were all around 17 years old, which basically just means there's no chance of me getting a tip. So they harass me again and again for refills, appetizers, napkins, all while we're super busy. When they leave, of course there's no tip, but one of them accidentally left their cell phone. So I bring it to the back and I'm like, Pedro, Cinco de Dolores? He hands me $5 and I'm like, well, 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 looks like I got my tip after all. The kid comes back in 20 minutes later asking me if I saw his cell phone. And I'm like, no, aside from the exact money for the meal, I didn't see anything else on the table. And the kid's looking at me like, damn. The f up. So those are all the degenerates I used to work with back at IHOP. If you guys had any worthless co-workers, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, when someone pisses you off, don't get mad, get even. Mmm, you know what you want to do? Oh, you want to push that subscribe button. Oh, push the button. Push the button.